Well, welcome everybody. The tomb is empty. Our Savior lives. And because he lives, we have a, a tremendous hope that no one can take away from us. Let's stand and worship today. Because he lives, I can fail.
has been conquered because of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Are you here to celebrate with me today? Woo! Yeah, amen. Go ahead and take a seat if you would, please. Welcome to Willamette Community Church. My name is Cyrus. It's my privilege to be one of the pastors here. And, uh, you know, we have a, a few traditions around here. And um, one you may be familiar with, it's when, uh, when we say, He is risen, you reply with maybe... He is risen indeed. And so that's one tradition you might hear. Let me do it one more time. He is risen. He is risen. Oh, yes. You may be familiar with that tradition. But we have another one that's a little bit more unique to uh, Willamette Community Church. It's when we say Resurrection Sunday, you say, Woohoo! That's right. And this is the day that we have been waiting for. We have been leading up to this day. Hopefully, you've been in the story of Jesus and his life and his willingness to die in our place and that you can be here and you can celebrate that. No matter what's going on in your life, this is an unchanging thing that we can keep coming back to, the resurrection of Jesus that gives us hope, joy, and peace throughout the most difficult challenges of life. Here at Willamette Community Church, we are growing closer to God and helping others along the way. And if you'd like to know more about that, if you have some area in your life that you are struggling with or you could use some prayer, utilize those connection cards there in front of you, if you would. Let us know how we can walk alongside you in this season of life, how we can be praying with you or, maybe with, uh, or for maybe some of your neighbors or loved ones. 
and we want to go through life together. That's God's design, that we would be in relationship with him and with each other. On that connection card, you can also, if you are interested in any, in any of the other announcements you hear or ministries, you can just write something down and put it in the joy box there in the back of the room with any offerings you may came prepared to give, and we will collect those later and uh, be praying for you and be in contact with you. We have free photos today for your friends and family that you can gather together and get those photos done. How many of you have already gotten your photos taken? <clears throat> All right, a few of you. That means uh, right afterward you can go down to the gym, get your photos taken, go ahead and get um, a donut or a scone. We have gluten-free options as well. There's all sorts of coffee and drinks that you can enjoy, and that's in the gym. That's on the other side of the building. If you see someone wearing one of these blue lanyards and a name tag, feel free to ask them any questions you may have. Um, the Mexico missions team got back yesterday, and that's, that's yeah, praise God. <clears throat> that was us before we went out on a prayer walk in the community and handed out invitations for uh, an outreach the next day. And you see um, Pastor Alfredo and his wife Connie and their family and a whole bunch of the people in Tabasco. But 27 from our church went and uh, experienced a wonderful mission trip. We counted it a success. We were safe. We were uh, stretched out of our comfort zone. We were able to serve, and we saw spiritual growth in our people and in the people of Tabasco, Mexico. And so we are so grateful for all that God has done. Uh, Men's Breakfast is having our uh, monthly breakfast this coming Saturday. So men, sign up on the connection card, send us an email, or there are sign-ups in the gym. Let us know if you will be in attendance. Five dollars uh, is the suggested uh, donation to help cover the cost of the food. And it is always good fellowship, not just uh, food for the stomach, but food for the soul as well. Uh, Albany Christian School, our largest ministry here at Willamette Community Church, is having an auction to fundraise so that we can continue to help make disciples and serve God with excellence and so if you are interested in that, let us know on a connection card. We are planning a, a uh, baptism Sunday coming up April 21st. And so if you would like to know more about baptism, um, here we believe that it is an outward display of an inward faith, a decision that you have made to trust Christ as your Savior. And so if you would like to be baptized or, or learn more about it, let us know on one of those connection cards. All right. This is the last thing I'm going to ask of you. Well, a couple of things. One, uh, we're going to greet one another, so I'm going to ask you to stand up. But I also want you to answer this important question. If you could only choose one, donut, scone, or muffin, what would it be? Tell your neighbor and tell them hello and good morning.
falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all have gone before us, and no one will believe. We'll sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and position. Your name stands above them all. And the angels cry. Whoa. Christ, oh, me, you are lifted high. 
Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his sins, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they bade him down. Church, would you pray with me this morning, please? 
Father in heaven, we praise you this morning, this moment, as we reflect on your love for sinful people like us, that you had a plan and a love to rescue us, and that you sent your only Son. And so we ask today as we open up your word that you would show us truth that would glorify you and that would change us, that would help us in our journey. As we sang, there will be a day where this life is done. We will stand before you and we want to be prepared for that the best we can. And so help us open our minds and our hearts to see wonderful things in your truth this morning. So I thank you for this day. I thank you for the victory of your son, Jesus. Guide us as we look into your word. I pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. You may be seated. Well, it is... Good to be with you today on this special Resurrection Sunday. That is right. And, uh, and I know we have some regulars here, and we have some people, friends visiting. And, but I, I kind of want to know my audience today. I want to ask a question, and I'm going to ask you to raise your hand so I can understand who you are, understand this demographic. Um, Cyrus asked a question, are you one who would prefer donuts or scones or muffins? So let me see the scone people. Would you raise your hand? Look around. Okay, we got some scone people. All right, thank you. Do we have any muffin people? Some of you, okay, yeah, not as many. And then how many donut people do we have? The one, yes. Yes, the ones after my own heart. In fact, uh, so we've made signs, and I see you have a blue lanyard and name tag, and so you're helping answer questions. They, they made one for me. I mean, I usually never get a name tag. So mine says Scott, and then... I mean, there's like safety or parking or hospitality. Mine says donut partaker. <laughs> so, I mean, they, they, they knew that I was coming today. So, um, but we have plenty of those donuts and scones and muffins and plenty of coffee. So, when I'm done here, please make your way over to the gym. Enjoy some of the goodies over there. Take some family photos and... I hope you have a great rest of the day. But before all of that, let me read to you from God's Word today. It's a privilege to preach God's Word about this resurrection of His Son, Jesus, from the grave. My mother-in-law, we were talking a couple days ago, and she says, I just love this weekend. I love being reminded of this story because the fact that Jesus was raised from the grave means that I will too when I die. Because she has entrusted her life to Jesus, and I know that many of you have, because Jesus was raised from the dead, when we entrust our life to him, when we die, we know that our life will be raised forever with him as well. And so that, this is great news for us. This is why we woo-hoo on this day. And we want you to know it's not just because we have extra donuts. Um, we do have a gift for you at the end of the service, and that's still not the greatest reason we celebrate we celebrate because of the victory of Jesus. Now as a church, over the last six weeks, we have been considering the way of Jesus. And we did this Friday night. We're going to do it again today, that Jesus is the way. And how we need Jesus to be the way. How we need Jesus to show us the way in life. Here's what the Word of God tells us, and you'll see it in your notes. Isaiah chapter 53 says that uh, we all like sheep, and if you know anything about sheep, they're not the smartest animals, and they just go their own way, but we all like sheep have gone our own way. Of course we have. We want what we want when we want it. This is us. 
book of Proverbs tells us this, that there is a way that seems right to man. There's a way that seems right to each of us. But that is a way that leads to death. And so thank God that his son Jesus is the way. Today specifically, I want to show you this, that Jesus is the way forward in troubled times. Jesus is the way forward in troubled times. And so what I'd like you to do this morning before we open God's word here is I would like you to consider, are you going through a troubled time? What is a situation that is currently troubling you? Go ahead and personalize this, please. What is a situation that is currently troubling you? I want you to consider that there is trouble. I would hope that you would understand you have some personal trouble. Because if you can see that there's trouble in your life, hopefully you would see that Jesus is the way forward in these troubling times. That Jesus is the Savior that you need. If you look at your life and say, I've got no troubles, um, well, I'd like to meet you. Okay, but I hope you can see I, I made a list and I'm not going to share my list I've been sharing my list most of the weeks but yeah so you know I, I got some troubling issues in my life and frankly when I encounter those I just get stuck I get petrified I get terrified I it's hard to move forward fortunately for me and fortunately for us Jesus is the way forward in these troubling times and so I hope that you can find some troubling issues in your life, even this morning. Luke chapter 24 is where we will be. I want you to grab a Bible, please. If you didn't bring one this morning or don't have one, grab the one sitting in front of you, please. We'll be on page 825. And I want to show you from God's Word how Jesus is the way forward in troubled times. Friday night we gathered here and we considered that Jesus was crucified and you can look at our cross and you can see a bunch of papers on there and, and, and we pinned our own sins on there and, because Jesus took that. He was crucified on a Roman cross. It was quite brutal. But at that point he was also being the sacrifice for our sins. Friday night, we considered that Jesus is the way to paradise. If you could, for a moment, imagine your beloved friend, your beloved teacher, the one who you knew was the Son of God, you knew was the Messiah from God, imagine seeing him crucified. Hands pierced, feet pierced, trying to breathe blood dripping for the disciples who saw this it was quite traumatic it was horrific it was cruel and unusual punishment it was sad they were dejected they were troubled and that was Friday they saw that Friday morning Friday afternoon they went home Friday night and that was traumatizing all day Saturday, they sat with this sight that they had witnessed, this news that their loved one had been crucified. All day Saturday, they were troubled. Luke chapter 24, verse 1. Follow along, please. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. It was a large uh, stone. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Just, what? 
I mean, we saw him placed in there Friday afternoon. Sunday morning, he should be there. He's not. Verse 4, while they were perplexed about it, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. Now, this is not two guys that looked a little extra nice, maybe for Easter. These are angels. They are dazzling because they have come from heaven. Verse 5, and these ladies were frightened and they bowed their faces to the ground. The men, we've addressed that they are angels, said to the ladies, why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here, but has risen. Again, try to put yourself in that situation. They're like, wait a second. We saw him crucified. He died. We saw him placed in here. That's what happened. We saw the big stone put there. What's, what, what's going on? What are you saying? Imagine hearing the, this news. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you saying he's alive? Verse 6. The angel said, Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man, this is a phrase Jesus used for himself, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day, if Friday is the first day, Saturday is the second day, Sunday the third day, and on the third day, be, rise. Remember how he said this? Oh yeah, he said, delivered and crucified, and we didn't know what that meant, and, and that he would rise, we really didn't know what he meant. Oh yeah, he said that he'd be delivered and crucified, and he'd rise. Okay, verse 8, and they remembered these words. Yes, he did say this. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the 11, that is the 11 disciples, the ones closest to Jesus, and to the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to be an idle tale and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what, he, what had happened. So consider Peter for a second. They say, we ran into angels, and he said he's alive, and Peter's like, I've got to see this for myself. My wife hates it when she tells me something, and I'm like, are you sure She's like, you don't believe me? I'm like, no. <laughs> she says to me, do you think I'm stupid? I'm like, I didn't say that. I just want to verify this for myself. It's actually quite insulting for her when I do that. So I'm trying to learn to say, gotcha, honey. But I get Peter. Like you lady said, What? So Peter gets in there and is like, wait a second. It's not just that the body's gone. The clothes that they buried him in are there. What's going on? Could the ladies be right? Could he possibly be alive? I mean, we saw him brutally murdered. Now, the next story that happens, we're not going to read it, but go ahead and read it later. It's fascinating. Two people are walking away from Jew Jerusalem, and Jesus has an encounter with them, and that's pretty fascinating. But I want to go past that, and I want to go to verse 36. Follow along in verse 36, please. As the disciples were talking about these things, in fact, other accounts say that they were locked in rooms for the fear of the Jews. They were locked in rooms thinking, wait a second, if the Jewish people just created a mob and crucified Jesus, they may come after his followers. So as they're there locked in this room, as they were talking about this thing, these things, notice what happens. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace to you. What just happened? They're sitting there. Did this happen? Did they steal the body? Could he be alive? He said things like this. Could this really happen? And then, woo, he was right there. Verse 37. 
But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And Jesus said to them, Why are you troubled? And why, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See, let me hear you say, See, my hands and my feet, that, is, that it is I myself. Touch, let me hear you say, Touch. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. He showed them his scars. They're like, we saw those scars. We saw the nails go in just Friday morning. We, we saw that. Let's for a moment consider the troubled disciples. Let's consider what they've gone through since in the last few days. Because Jesus is the way forward in troubled times, let's consider them and how troubled they are. Jesus said to them, verse 38, why are you troubled? So why might they be troubled? Let's just do a quick recollection of what's happened to them. They've gone through a lot in the last few days. They were eating a meal together with Jesus Thursday night, and he had said things like, I'm going to be leaving. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. We've been following you for three years real closely, and you're leaving. Where are you going? Why can't we go with you? So they've been on edge. Jesus has been saying things over the last couple of days. They saw him arrested by a mob on Thursday night. They saw him falsely accused and sentenced to death, and it was quick. And then for six hours, they see him being crucified. They saw this with their eyes. You can start to get the idea why they would have been troubled. And then there's the fear of the Jews. Are we next? Are they coming after us? And so I understand there are some reasons when Jesus says, why are you troubled? They probably could have made a list right there and go, because of that. I could also hear Jesus saying, wait a second, I have told you a few things so that you wouldn't be troubled. Would you remember some of these things? I said I would be delivered. I said I would be crucified. I used the C word. I said I would rise. Why would you be troubled when I told you all of this would happen? I told you to trust God and to trust me. I told you that I am the way and the truth and the life. I've told you these things. I told you that in these coming days, you would have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome. And so when he says, why are you troubled? He's given some assurance to them. Good point, Jesus. Now in this section of Luke's account, I find four gifts that Jesus gave to help the disciples move forward in their troubled times. As we read this, the next few words, I, I find some truths that he gave to, Jesus, or to the disciples to say, listen, I get that you feel internally troubled. I want to help you move forward in these troubled times. And frankly, I think these four gifts that Jesus gave to the disciples are gifts that we could receive today. I mean, I hope you receive a donut, a muffin, or a scone. I hope you receive a cup of coffee. I hope you receive the gift we give to you at the end of the service. But I hope that you would receive these gifts that Jesus gave to his disciples. So let's consider the way forward in troubled times. Verse 39, follow along, please. Jesus said, See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? He wants food. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. If they had a donut, maybe they would have given him that. And he took it and he ate it before them. They're like, it's actually him. It's not a hologram. It's not a spirit. He's actually eating. First thing I notice is that Jesus gave legitimate assurance of his power. 
He said, I want you to know legitimately, I want you to be assured that I have power from my Father in heaven to rise from the dead. Look at my hands, look at my feet, look at the fact that I'm eating. It's me. Jesus appeared to the disciples that day, but he actually appeared to them multiple times over the next 40 days. Over the next 40 days, he appeared in different ways, and they're like, there you are again, there you are again. The resurrection that we celebrate truly happened. The fact that Jesus came out of the grave and was alive, it truly happened. And these first eyewitnesses, they ended up giving their lives for this truth. If this was a hoax, they wouldn't have gone to the point where people said, deny Jesus and live or continue to proclaim him and we will kill you. And they said, we have got to continue to proclaim what we've seen. And Jesus gave them legitimate assurance of his power. And this legitimate assurance, it gives them strength to go on and live their lives. Frankly, it gives you and I the strength to go on, that Jesus is all-powerful. I was trying to think, how else do I know that Jesus is powerful besides this event that took place 2,000 years ago? Well, this morning when I walked outside to get into my truck to drive here, I see the moon. And I marvel at the moon when I see it. I'm like, that little rock out there, I mean, it was facing this way a few days ago, and it was full, and now it's over there, and it's half in the, in the mornings, and that little rock's been around for a while, and every once in a while, I forget that this planet that I'm on, it's huge, and it, we're cruising through space. Who holds all that together? And then there's the sun, and I'm thankful for the sun. And it's supposed to be a beautiful afternoon today, and that sun just sits there, that star 93 million miles away. If it all of a sudden decided to get 92 million miles, imagine it got a million miles closer to us. Okay? That's hot. Imagine if it goes a million miles farther from us. We'd freeze. God holds all of this together, He's all powerful. And we just take it for granted. And God has given us many legitimate assurances of his power. Then I was thinking of you. Changed lives. Who changed your life? God has changed your life. Some of you have come to know Jesus Christ in the last year. God changed your life. Some of you, in the last two or three years, God has changed your life. Some of you, you've been here a long time. God changed your life 30, 40, 50 years ago, and he's sustaining you. Those are miracles that God would change sinners to follow Jesus. This is legitimate assurance of his power, and Jesus is the way forward in troubled times. Go to verse 44, please. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you guys while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. Let's consider this for a moment. Because when we are troubled, we don't know which end is up. We don't know truth. When we're troubled, all we can see is the potential fear out there. And again, these disciples have potential fear out there. What could happen to our lives? And I notice that Jesus gives insight about his truth. Yes, he'd given a legitimate assurance of his power to rise from the dead, but now he's giving insight specifically into his word. He says, I don't want you to be in the dark. I want to give you insight to the truth. Again, Jesus is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. And he wants every one of us to know truth. 
The devil, on the other hand, he wants you to know lies. He wants to deceive you. He wants to steal everything that good that God is doing. He wants to destroy you. He wants to kill you. Jesus comes to give you life, and he wants you to know truth. And so he imparted, did you see where it said there? It says he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said, everything that the prophet spoke about me, everything that was R Moses wrote about me, I want you to understand this. So maybe in that conversation, they're like, you mean in Deuteronomy chapter 18, when Moses says this, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. You mean when Moses said that, it was about you, Jesus? And they're starting to put some things together like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We had heard all this growing up. We were aware of some of this, but this was you? Yeah. Or as we looked at Friday night, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. It says, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon Him was the punishment that brought us peace. And with His wounds we are healed. And all these good Jewish young men would have been Jewish boys and they would have been taught in all this and they were like, yeah, we know that. That's from Isaiah. And that's you? It is you. That's you. Jesus is giving them insight into his word and they're putting all the pieces together and they're like, this is all about you. Maybe they went over a psalm like Psalm 118. Psalm 118, it says this, that the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Oh, we memorized this in Sunday school. That was you? And Jesus gives them insight into his word and they start putting these things together. And I'll tell you what, some of you maybe don't have much insight into God's word. He desires to give you insight into all of this. I remember growing up, the son of a pastor, my dad, he'd preach messages like this on Easter Sunday, and I really wasn't too interested. I was more interested in to hear how my favorite baseball teams were doing. When I went to Bible college my freshman year, they gave a test for all incoming freshmen. What do you know about the Bible? My dad calls me into his office because he's the head of the theology department, like the Bible department. He says, son, we looked at all the entry tests. It's embarrassing for me, son, and it's embarrassing for you. You scored the lowest of all incoming freshmen. I'm like, I thought Easter was about getting Easter baskets in the start of the baseball season. But as I became receptive, God has given me much insight into this. And sometimes you say, oh, Scott, you seem to know a lot. Well, because I've allowed God to give me this insight. You see, Jesus gave them insight that day, and he desires to give that to you as well if you would be receptive. There are great truths that you need to know, especially in troubled times. You need to know that God will keep in perfect peace you whose mind is stayed on him. You need to know truths that the one who is in us is greater than the one who is in the world. You need to know the truths that nothing is able to separate the Christian from the love of God. Nothing. You need to know that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion. And God desires to give you insight into his word. The question is, will you be receptive? But Jesus, at that moment, he gave insight about his truth, and he gives it again today because Jesus is the way forward in troubled times. Verse 46, follow along, please. And they said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Those are some good words worth underlining. That repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning here in Jerusalem. Let's consider again our troubled times. One of the things that brings about troubled times is a broken relationship. 
That was one of the things I wrote on mine. I was like, what causes trouble? Broken relationship. And it's worse when that broken relationship is with our Creator and the one that we will stand before when our life is over. This is why Jesus offers forgiveness to receive and then to be extended to others. Jesus offers forgiveness. You see, for generations, the Israelites, they would make sacrifices of animals for their sins, but it never completely paid for the sins. But now, Christ, Jesus Christ, died for sins, the righteous one for all the unrighteous ones to bring us to God. This was a new message for them that sins have been paid for by the death of the Son of God. Forgiveness of sins is being offered for all time. And the question for them and the question for us today is, will you repent? Will you have a change of mind, a change of thinking about your way? You and I typically think, I'm going to go my own way. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to do what I think's best. We have to repent of that. We have to go, wait a second, that's bad thinking. It's actually wrong thinking to God. It's offensive thinking. We have to repent and change our mind of that. And when we do, will you receive then the offer that he says, I will forgive you if you acknowledge that I'm the one who can forgive you. You see, Jesus offers forgiveness because Jesus is the way forward in troubled times. Lastly, verse 48. Jesus said to them that day, you are witnesses to these things. And behold, I am sending the promise. Let me hear you say, sending the promise, sending the promise. of my Father upon you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't want you to repeat that one necessarily. <laughs> I, I got to be more clear, but you, you were listening. I, I appreciate that. Let's go back. I want you to repeat the sending the promise part. Sending the promise. Sending the promise. Okay, then just listen. Of my, father, <laughs> of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power. Let me hear you say clothed with power. Clothed. From on high. You see, for the... A troubled heart that we have, the troubled times that we are in, we feel powerless. I'm looking at my list again. I'm like, okay, uh, what is the situation currently troubling you? With that, I feel somewhat powerless. With that, I feel somewhat powerless. With that, I feel very powerless. The followers of Jesus felt powerless as well. We're troubled. I know you've told us some truth, but we feel troubled. And Jesus at that point gives empowerment to minister his good news. He gives empowerment. Write this word down. He gives empowerment to minister his good news. Now, 50 days after Jesus has been crucified, God would give his spirit to every person who believed that Jesus was the Son of God, that Jesus was the Messiah from heaven to pay for the sins. Everyone who said, we entrust our life to Jesus, God says, I put my spirit in you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and everyone. And he's been doing that for 2,000 years. You can read about this in Acts chapter 2. Write this down, Acts chapter 2. It's a great event that happened. What this says to me is that a follower of Jesus is not just one who believes and says, oh, I know, I got legitimate assurance. I've looked and researched and I believe that Jesus existed and was crucified. It's more than that. A follower of Jesus is more than one who has legitimate assurance. And a follower of Jesus is more than one who has insight into God's word and says, oh, I can tell you all the verses and I, I can show you all the truths. A follower of Jesus is more than that. And frankly, a follower of Jesus is more than one who has just been forgiven and says, I know that my sins have been paid for. 
Because a follower of Jesus is one who has been empowered by God's Spirit. Catch this to be a lifelong minister of the good news. If you've entrusted your life to Christ, you have the Spirit of God, and you are now called to be a lifelong minister of His good news. To who? Everyone we encounter, the ones that God puts in your path. And because of this, God has been changing lives for over 2,000 years because of the empowerment of ordinary people like you and me. Ordinary people who believe Jesus is the way. So Jesus gives empowerment to minister his good news because he is the way forward in troubled times. So again, let's consider these disciples and finish with this today. They're locked in a room in Jerusalem. And to that group of troubled people, Jesus showed them the way forward. You don't have to stay locked in a room. In fact, I don't want you to stay locked in a room. I want you to go out actually throughout this city, throughout this area. I'm going to send you all over the world. And you're going to be my ministers. But let's ask this question and personalize it today. What does this mean for me? What does this mean for me today? I get that those people, they heard that news and they're like, okay, we feel troubled and we're not going to stay locked up in this room forever. But what does it mean for us? I've got a question and then a thought. The first question is this. I want you to write this down and consider it. Who do I say that Jesus Christ is? Would you write this down? And I want every single one of you to answer this question today. Who do you say Jesus Christ is? You're like, well, I like celebrating his birthday. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Yeah, he's more than that. Really, you have to decide between he's either the Lord that you will follow, or if you don't think he's that, I think you call him liar because he claimed to be the Son of God. Who do you say that he is? Who do you say he is? Is he the Lord of your life and I will follow you and I know that when this life is over or when you come, I'm going to be embraced by you because I have chosen to follow you? Or will you say, I just think it's all a scam. Hallmark made you. No. You're either receiving him or you're rejecting him. Decide today. He said he would die and rise, and that happened. I mean, that's calling the shots. That, that's calling the ultimate shot. He's not just saying, well, I kind of predict, predu- uh, predict uh, this certain team to win the, the basketball championship, okay? Bigger than that, he said, they'll crucify me, and on the third day I'd rise from the dead, which he did. If someone says that, you receive him or reject him don't reject him don't reject him you see Jesus is the way to your deepest healing he's the way to life that is truly life he's the way to God's deep deep and eternal love he's the way to not lose hope he's the way to perfect peace he's the way to paradise The second thought I have for you is this as we close today. I want you to believe that Jesus is the way forward in your troubled times. This is the greatest thing I can tell you to believe that Jesus is the way. That he is the way forward in your troubled times. He is the way. Yeah, you might have to work. You might have to help restore some relationships. You might do this, but he is the way. It's going to be relying on him, leaning on him. He's the way in your troubled times. 
Let me say something real quickly to those who believe in Jesus Christ because I know there are a good number of you in this room and you'd say, yes, I have believed that Jesus is the way. I'm going to tell you, keep believing. Keep trusting. You're like, Scott, you don't know what troubled times I'm going through. You're right, I don't. Sometimes you share that with us and we pray for you and we want to care for you, but I'm going to tell you if you're a believer in Christ, keep believing, keep trusting. He's with you. He loves you. He's working all things for good to those who love him. There will continue to be troubled times in your life. I know that. So we will keep believing. We will keep trusting because Jesus is the way forward in troubled times. Let me say something to those of you who are yet to believe that Jesus is the Christ. Because I don't know the status of your heart, your soul. I mean, you all look beautiful today, but I don't know how, who is rejecting Jesus. So let me say to those who are, for your own sake, I'm begging you, believe and entrust your life to Jesus. This one that we're celebrating today. He went to the cross to pay for your sins so that you'd be rightly related to God so that you could say, I'm forgiven of all my sins. Believe him and trust your life to him. I'll tell you what, you will also continue to experience troubled times the rest of your life. You just will. We... All of us will. But don't try to live this life any longer on your own. You need Jesus. Or you will not be able to make, make it forward in your troubled times. Oh, you'll try. You're like, okay, I'll try it with my money and I'll try it with my hard work and I'll try it with my friends and you'll get a little way but you won't be with the way. I'm going to ask you to pray with me, all of you. Uh, Father in heaven, I thank you for this news, this proclamation that you raised your son miraculously from the dead, that he's alive today. He's praying for us. He's coming back for us. And Jesus, we thank you that you gave these gifts to the disciples that day when they were troubled. And you know we are troubled too. Help us to receive this legitimate assurance that you've given. Help us to receive this insight of your truth that you offer help us to receive the forgiveness that you have granted to us help us to receive the empowerment that you've wanted to give us so that we would go out and minister for you ultimately help us to receive your life today I'm going to ask if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, would you raise your hand to say, God, I believe you again. You can whisper this to God. You can say it silently. Just a hand raised to say, yes, I do believe God in your son, Jesus. If you're a believer, raise that hand. Tell him that you believe in him. Ask for grace to continue to believe when the times are troubled, keep your hands up, please. And I would like to ask if those of, there are those today who say, I've never trusted my life to Christ. Today, God offers that to you. Raise your hand in belief of God's one and only Son, Jesus. And He says, I not only see your hand, but I know your heart. 
And he says, I forgive you of your sins. And I will give you insight into truth. And I will continue to show you the assurance that I am who I say I am. And I will empower you with my spirit. And you will be great ministers for me until the day I call you home. You can put your hands down. Father in heaven, we thank you for seeing our hands and seeing into our hearts. Would you help us today in our troubled times and in the coming days in our troubled times to believe that you are the way, the truth, and the life. You are the way forward in these troubled times. Help us to look to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. How great the castle that lay between us. How high the mountain that could not lie. In desperation, I turned to hell. Spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace?
boxes on the way out. You can do this online. Jesus, I believe Jesus is the way. Would you do that, please? Secondly, we'd like you to receive a gift from us on the way out. We have a bracelet for you that says Jesus is the way. Please receive that gift from us. And then, I'm going to ask you something else. Make your way to the gymnasium. Grab a donut muffin scone. Take some pictures. Just enjoy this church family we have. But ultimately today, I want to ask you this. Believe. Believe that Jesus is the way forward in your troubled times. God bless you and have a wonderful week.